Mmm, prestige. You can't spell that without MSI. What we've got right here today is the MSI Prestige 16 AI Evo, and it looks like it could be a real good one. So huge thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video, and let's get right into it. We've got a quick guide. For charging, we have a 100 watt brick. That's actually quite nice and small maybe gallium nitride, and it is delivering that 100 watts over USB type C, which I do really like to see. That means that if, say, you forget this, you can just plug in your laptop to your phone charger and charge it that way. Now, what you might have noticed is that this says AI in the name, and it isn't complete bogus. It has Intel's new Core Ultra chips inside of it, which has a neural computing chip, which allows it to just like accelerate AI workloads, such as stable diffusion, even just like, AI blurring the windows window so these use less power when it's doing like transparency and stuff like that. It is actually kind of useful. One thing a lot of notebooks these days get wrong, especially when they're trying to be thin and light, is the IO and fortunately MSI has not made that mistake here. On the right hand side we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack, full size SD card reader, every photographer is super stoked about that one, and a full size ethernet port. Around the back we have full size HDMI, I love to see that, USB type A and two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and on the right hand side we have a Kensington lock and that is it, just a couple of fins. MSI in their notes for this says that it's ultra thin and ultra light, but it looks not the most thin. I'm kind of curious. Oh, I see what's happening here. This is one of those ones where the laptop itself is actually pretty thin, but they have these feet down on the bottom so that it has nice and lots of room for the air intake. So I'm guessing that the thermal performance is pretty good. And that's why when I just had it on the table, it seemed kind of thick, even though it actually is right around 19 millimeters thick. Now that is not what I would consider ultra thin, but at the same time, I think that it's a good compromise because it is a tiny bit thicker, but also like full size ethernet, full size HDMI. I think a lot of you guys know which one you would rather have between thin and usable IO. Now, MSI claims the Prestige 16 is 3.3 pounds. Let's see how this one is. 3.44, not bad, not bad. I'm guessing we have just a little bit extra RAM or something, the actual weights of things can change a fair bit from config to config. Like you get this with a 4070, I imagine that's adding an extra like three, 400 grams to it. The overall look of the Prestige 16 is quite nice. It does have that professional feel. It does have, I'm actually reefing on it pretty hard right now. And it has exceptional chassis rigidity. That's being provided by an aluminum and magnesium blend for the chassis. Is it fingerprint resistant though? That's, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm like half a greasy one right now. And this is, yeah, you have to shine it straight into the light to see those fingerprints. So good job there, MSI. The chassis around the keyboard and the trackpad is also really nice and firm. There's a little bit of a soft spot over here. At the same time, that's in the numpad area, so I'm not super duper concerned about that. MSI's build quality in their laptops has just completely changed over the last couple of years, and I'm really impressed with just how well built this thing is. This has an OLED panel. I don't even need to look at my notes to tell you that much. Just using my eyeballs, I can pretty easily tell you that this is a fantastic looking display, but our labs did have a sniff of it, and it's actually kind of interesting, first of all, it is quite good, but what's interesting is that in SDR, the accuracy of the panel is actually pretty bad with an average Delta E of 4.8, which is way higher than the two that we would expect for professional work, which is what this is aimed at. Everything's a lot more vibrant than it should be, and we weren't able to find any obvious ways to stop that. But if you just turn on HDR, okay, that just looks way better. So you enable HDR and it's quite accurate in HDR right around that two that we expect of the Delta E. But turning on HDR also makes it way more accurate in SDR for some reason. So there's not really any reason to not just turn on HDR in Windows because then the color mapping of this display in all of your content is just way better. Why that is, I don't know, but it's just one click right here and you're good. 
Also, the peak brightness of this display is 600 nits, so that's bright enough that you might be able to go outside and work on this, although it is quite shiny and really it's an OLED, so where it's really, really going to shine is in dark rooms where you can just see those completely black blacks. It's just, oh, oh darn. No touchscreen though, that's unfortunate. But what is fortunate is that in here we have an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. In this one right here, you can go up to an Ultra 9. In this one, we have 16 cores. So that's six performance cores, eight efficiency, and a total of 22 threads. This thing goes up to 4.8 gigahertz, which is just ripping fast. Also quite fast, 6,400 mega transfer per second RAM, 32 gigabytes of the stuff is in here. It does say it's a row of chips, so chances are we can't upgrade that in the future, but such is a thin and light. One thing we just realized that is strange is that if you have six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, that is 14 cores, but it says that it has 16, and that's because it also has two ultra low power efficiency cores, which are, honestly, I don't really know what those do besides use way less power than the already efficient cores, but good job, Intel. For storage, we have one terabyte. Wi-Fi, it's a killer Wi-Fi 7 card, so that should be ripping fast if your router is able to do Wi-Fi 7. GPU, it's Intel Arc Graphics that's built onto the chip. Now this is available with up to a 4070, so if you want to do less like photo editing and more hardcore video editing, I might suggest that you go for the 4060 or the 4070 version of this, although we weren't able to test those, so maybe just look up how good it is somewhere else. Also, we have Intel's NPU. This is dedicated to accelerating AI tasks. So doing stuff like uh, stable diffusion in GIMP, we can do different stuff within Lightroom Classic and just general AI things. How is the keyboard? The keyboard overall is pretty decent. I would give it maybe like a B minus somewhere around there. It's been a real sore point for MSI for years and years, and it has gotten a lot better as they have improved the chassis rigidity, but it still isn't quite there. Like if you look, the key stability, if I push on the side, isn't fantastic. There's a lot of deflection from the key before it starts to actuate, and that can hurt your speed and your accuracy. And there's definitely some inconsistencies. Like on ours, the J key takes less force to press than the K key. Maybe something like a 15% variance or something like that, when you normally expect more like 10 or five on a really high-end laptop. That said though, after a while, I was able to get mostly used to it. And some of those inconsistencies do still rear their heads as a little bit of not the accuracy that I would expect to have on a keyboard like this but a lot of you might trade that for the inclusion of a numpad on the right. A lot of people I know, and like myself, when I'm using SolidWorks, absolutely love having a numpad over here, and that can be the make or break of if you want this laptop for your actual professional job. One area though where MSI has just knocked it out of the park on this is the trackpad. Now it is over to the left to align it with the keyboard and not the numpad, which I do dig. It's glass topped, it's accurate, it's really nice and large, and overall just no complaints about the trackpad. Good job there. All right, so I'm gaming at 1080p here. First of all, Rocket League looks absolutely fantastic on this OLED monitor. It is 60 hertz, but OLED has super quick response times, which does mean that things look absolutely fantastic and it should play really quite well, although it's not the best gaming experience that I've ever had. One thing for performance that's nice that MSI has here is the MSI AI engine. So that smartly just changes between your various power modes depending on what you're doing. And that's great because I've seen the data from a bunch of different companies and only like 10% of people actually take the time to go like extreme performance mode, balance, silence, super battery and stuff like that. Most people never look at that ever. And having it just be AI engine, it figures it out for you. And it's probably mostly really quite good. We've had Rocket League open for like five or so minutes. Let's see how hot she's getting. 46. So that's pretty borderline, if I'm honest. <laughs> it looks like that the keys themselves are in the 42 range, which is okay-ish. Although if we look at right up at the top here, this aluminum is 
conducting quite a bit of heat. That's uh, 48 degrees. It'll take a while to burn you, but that will burn you. So don't, uh, don't hold your hand here while it's rendering. <laughs> Even though this might be a little bit hotter than I wanted, it is at least not very loud. Like, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but I barely can. And like holding it up like this, you can hear a bit from the bottom, but on the desk, the amount of noise that the fans are making is really quite reasonable. Okay, all right, that's respectable. It's not the loudest laptop that I've ever heard, but at the same time, staging's good, clarity is good, and they haven't just like cranked up the volume to where the poor speakers distort and stuff. It's all nice and clear, even if there isn't a whole lot of bass in there. Oh, Crab Rave is also just so good for showing off how fantastic OLEDs look. Like, look at that, pitch black. That is nighttime right there. Now onto the webcam. So we have a 1080p webcam up here and the first thing that I really like is this little switch right here. You can just hard disable it. I really, really appreciate these kind of little switches so that you know for sure that your webcam is not looking at you when you don't want it to. Coming in here though, it looks fine. It's kind of noisy, but not too bad. But speaking of noisy, gentlemen, we now have two laptops playing 10 hours of construction sounds. Now MSI says that their AI noise cancellation pro works really quite well. So let's uh, just turn that on for a bit and maybe it sounds way better or maybe it doesn't. We'll find out in a second. Damn, that worked really well. That is sick. I do have to say MSI, good job on the AI noise canceling. Now uh, I do have a little surprise for you guys. Second laptop. It's the same thing, but three inches smaller. Aww. It's so cute. <laughs> and also like quite nice. It really does achieve the being very thin and very light that MSI said that the 16 is, but 16 is pretty large. 13 is much more manageable. But you are giving up things like there's no ethernet, there's no full size SD card reader. But if what you're looking for is something that's just super duper nice and thin, Prestige 13. 13 also has an OLED display. It has a keyboard that is quite similar to the 16, slightly smaller touchpad, but I'm not too concerned about that. And it also has a 75 watt hour battery, which in a laptop of this size is very, very impressive. We also have a 99 watt hour in this one, but that's kind of what you expect in a 16 inch. 75 watt hours is really, really good in a 13 inch. Eight Phillips head screws later, all of which are the same size. And wow, that's where the GPU goes. <laughs> wow, there's just nothing there. Normally you see like, you know, the heat pipes going over to another fan so that your CPU has a higher TDP, but they're just like, nope, uh, there's, there's a gap. Now the good news in here is that we have two SSD slots. So we have the one terabyte from the factory. And if you want to upgrade it, there's another one that is just nice and free. Is it free when you get a GPU? I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it is without the GPU. We know that much. Also, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered down right here, which does allow you to have higher speeds, but you can't upgrade it in the future. So make sure you get enough when you purchase the laptop. The real star of the show in here is the 99.9 .9 watt hour battery. Now that is just a hair under what you're allowed to take on a plane. And it gets us over 10 hours of battery life, which you might be thinking, uh, we don't even have a dedicated GPU. Why isn't it more than that? And that's largely down to the OLED panel. OLED's just suck back battery life. And that's why we need this absolutely massive thing to compensate for that so that you can have those just actually stunning visuals that it is able to provide. Now, of course, this video is sponsored, so take my recommendation with a grain of salt, but I'm actually quite impressed with the price. The config that we have right here, one terabyte SSD, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and that fantastic 4K OLED panel is $1,400 US, which, for that is actually quite good. If you want something a little bit less, the 13 inch comes in at a starting price of 1050 and it can go up from there. And of course this right here, if you want to outfit it with a 4060 or a 4070, it can get pretty pricey pretty fast. But this configure right here particularly, I am quite impressed with. 
And of course, I'm impressed with MSI for sponsoring this video. Huge thanks guys for watching, hit like, get subscribed, and just have a great old day.